What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I want to talk about a big issue that I see in Call of Duty, especially with Advanced Warfare. I'm seeing this a whole lot more often with Advanced Warfare, and that is people leaving games at the first sign of a struggle or just leaving games on a whim. They don't even think twice about it. It's just, oh, I don't like this. I'm leaving the game just like that. And now they leave all of the teammates that they had on that team. They leave them all hanging and it just gets worse and worse for them. So today I'm going to be sharing a couple ideas that could possibly help alleviate this issue or maybe even solve this issue completely. Let's get into it. Alright guys, so you guys have probably experienced this, especially in Advanced Warfare. Uh, you're playing the game, you're starting to fall behind a little bit, but you're still in the fight, you still have a chance. And then all of a sudden, one or two or three or sometimes your entire team just leaves for whatever reason. Maybe the enemy team calls in a score streak and they don't like it, so they just leave. This is something that I run into all the time in Advanced Warfare, and it's extremely frustrating. Most games that I play are decided by which team doesn't leave first. This is extremely frustrating, and some people are saying that they should just add a probation for leaving games, like there is in League Play. I don't know if there is in Ranked Play in Advanced Warfare, but basically, if you leave too many games, then the game won't let you search for another game until their probation period is up. So it's a punishment for leaving games. This is something that I don't agree with for public matches. For League Play, absolutely. I totally agree with this system. But for public matches, no. I disagree with this. This is a casual game, and people should be able to leave the game for whatever reason they want. Sometimes it might be something in real life. Sometimes the connection might be bad. They shouldn't be punished, in my opinion, for this in public matches. In league play, different story, like I said. Instead, what I would do is I would try to reward people for staying in the game. I find rewards are much more useful and effective at making people do things in Call of Duty games. And the biggest tool that Advanced Warfare has going for them is supply drops. All they would have to do to basically solve this issue, not necessarily solve the issue, but definitely alleviate the issue a lot, is make it so you can't earn your advanced or your regular supply drop. You can't earn your supply drop until the game is over. So right now, your supply drops are triggered by a death or a kill or something. We really don't know the whole formula, but they are triggered by some sort of an event for you to earn the supply drop. Why not make that event the end of the game? If you can't earn a supply drop until you stay through to the end of a game, I think that would be perfect. Now, I'm not saying you should earn a supply drop at the end of every game. I think they should go off of pretty much whatever system they're going off of right now. My theory that seems to uh, be true for my account and for me personally is after 45 minutes, you do earn a supply drop once an event is triggered. So they could keep doing the same thing for me anyways. This is what I experienced. Some people have different experience or they say they do. But for me, if they made it 45 minutes and the event had to be finishing the game. So after 45 minutes, the first game that you finish and play right to the end, regardless if you win or lose, that is when you get your supply drop. This would help so much with this issue because supply drops are one of the biggest things that keep people coming back for more in Advanced Warfare and people constantly want those supply drops. This is something that if they did implement this, it would have to be clearly communicated to the fan base. So they'd have to actually tell you how supply drops are earned and that you do have to stay to the end of the game to earn your supply drop. I think this would fix so much with this game. So that's one fix for Advanced Warfare, but unfortunately we're almost at the end of Advanced Warfare's life cycle and at this point it's honestly probably too late. So what can we do for other games, like Black Ops 3 for instance, or Ghosts 2, assuming they don't have variants or supply drops or anything like that? Well, the biggest thing is I would put more emphasis on the match bonuses. Just think the last time you've actually even thought about a match bonus in Call of Duty. For me, I don't even know that they're there. The match bonuses are there, you get that little bonus of XP at the end of a match, but it's not really clearly communicated, there's no big animation showing you like, wow, look at all the mass match bonus you got for finishing that match. And also, when you do look at the match bonuses, it's usually not like really significant. It's not significant enough to matter. So, for most people, when they are thinking about leaving a game, the thought doesn't even cross their mind that they might be sacrificing some sort of a match bonus. They just want to leave, so they leave. If you make that match bonus something that is actually worth earning and something that you can see and it's really com clearly communicated to you at the end of a game, 
This may make people think twice when they go to leave a game. They might think, okay, maybe I'll just stick it out for a couple minutes because I'll get my match bonus and then everything will be good. And also, I'm not 100% sure if they reward match bonuses if you lose. Uh, I think they might, but I feel they should definitely have match bonuses if you lose, but they shouldn't be nearly as good as if you win, obviously. So this will at least encourage you, if it's a game that you just can't win or you're a little bit behind, th this will at least encourage you to stay in the game and you'll at least get that match bonus out of it. One other idea that I have, and this one I'm still kind of on the fence about, it could still use some tweaking, it's just something that popped into my head, is make it so that any progress you gain towards certain challenges throughout the game, you don't earn that progress until the game is over. Now with this, I realize it could be very frustrating. Like if you get a one in a million, which is killing someone with a care package falling on their head, and then you randomly disconnect from the game or something, like the, the host's dashboards and somehow you, you just get disconnected from the game, you lose connection, which does happen. That would be extremely frustrating if you don't get the credit for that one in a million. So I feel for this, you'd have to sort of separate the challenges into two different types. There's like the grinding challenges, these are your camo challenges, things like that. Uh, the things that you have to get like 150 kills for, or 300 kills for, or something like that. That would be one type of challenges, and these ones you don't earn until you finish the game, and then they they are like credited to your account, the ones that you got for that, that particular game. And then there's the other challenges, which are like the one in a million. These are the lucky challenges, these are the challenges that don't happen very often. These ones, I feel, should be earned on the spot. Now, of course, it's not like the most solid idea right here. Like I said, could use some tweaking, but this is something that could be implemented to help people, uh, to encourage people to at least stay till the end of the game. Now, a couple other things that don't really fall into rewards, but just a couple other things that I've thought about that I feel could help people, uh, encourage people to stay in the game, is first off, I would once again make stats publicly available. At least your kill death ratio, score per minute, and win loss ratio. I know some people disagree with me on this, but whatever. This is my opinion. Uh, this is my video, and you can disagree all you want. I'm totally fine with people disagreeing in the comment section below as long as it's constructive. But I would make those three stats public publicly visible, and I would make it so they're always displayed together. So you can't look at somebody's kill death ratio without seeing their win loss ratio right beside them. So with this, it kind of prevents those kill whores in a way from uh, completely ignoring the objective or it might it might at least deter some people because then when you look and you see somebody with a three kill death kill death ratio but like a 0.2 win loss you know they're either a lobby shopper or they just camp at the back of the map and are not helping their team at all if you display it side by side with win loss it forces a little bit of accountability and it also forces some accountability for the people that chronically leave games and better yet, they can even add another stat, which is a did not finish stat, or a DNF stat. So every time you don't finish a game, it adds to your percentage of, of how many games you finish. So if your did not finish stat is like 50%, that means you don't finish 50% of your games, and everyone can see that, and they can see that you're a poor sport that just leaves games. Whereas if you have a more reasonable one, like 5% or 10%, that's okay. Like everyone will look up at that and think, okay, his stats are still valid. Uh, and everything looks good. So that's just another thing that could be added. That's my opinion. Some people will disagree about having those stats publicly available, but I like to see a system like that. It forces some accountability on people. Another big thing that I feel could be changed, and this one I'm not 100% sure on how they do it with, uh, with Advanced Warfare, but this is team balancing. Now I know if there's a clan on one team, you can't really balance the teams out. This is aside from clans. I run in this... I run into this fairly often while I'm playing solo. There'll be, let's say, three top players that are clearly very solid players. They're always in the top three. Uh, usually I'll be one of them, not trying to brag, but that's just the way it is. I'll be one of those top three, and then there'll be two other really strong players that are right up there with me. And then the rest are basically average players, and then you have two kind of bad or low level just people that are brand new to the game, you have two of those types of players that are absolutely getting annihilated every game. They're going like 5 and 20 every game. I run into this all the time, and almost always, this is not just a confirmation bias, I promise, almost always I end up on the team with the two players that don't know what they're doing. Now those two players might be on a party together, but come on. <laughs> I know the other team, I know it's not a party of six that I'm playing against, I see people like leaving and joining at different times and they're not partied up, they're not communicating with each other or anything, not 
I'm not saying that you have to be communicating to be in a party or anything. But I've seen people like switch around to different teams and stuff, so it's clear they're not in a clan. And yet, I almost always get put on that team whenever I play solo. I almost always get put on that team that looks like they have no chance right from the beginning of the game. As soon as the teams are decided, and you can see it in the lobby, I can basically tell you, okay, we're going to lose. I don't, it doesn't matter how well I try, or how hard I try, or how well I do, we're going to lose this game. Whereas back in Black Ops 2, this was in mercenary mode, was more so my experience, so maybe that maybe there is just this uh, these situations where I don't realize it is a clan, but I really try to pay attention on pay attention to who's clan with who and who keeps ending up on the same team and therefore they might be on a clan. But in mercenary mode in Black Ops 2, something I really noticed was your score per minute stats, if you looked at the lobby leaderboard, you almost always had the top player on one team second from the top on the other team, third from the top on the other team, and it would stagger like that. This made the teams more balanced than we normally see in Advanced Warfare, because you have uh, a lot of good players on one team mixed with a lot of average to bad players on one team, and you have the same on the other team. There's always that mix, and it would also swap things around a little bit to make that balanced. I feel this is something that could be worked on, Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's already, there's some perfect system implemented and it's just the fact that we're playing against clans a lot that kind of screws with things, but this is something that I would love to see is just better team balancing overall, if possible. So there's my opinion all, on all of that, as well as some ideas that I've, I came up with that I think would encourage people to stay more towards the ends of the game rather than leaving at the first sign of a struggle or just leaving on a whim without a second thought. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any other ideas that would help people, uh, help keep people in the games and keep them from leaving their teammates behind. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.